Here it is, you guys, the moment you've all been waiting for. After watching Danny Mullen's one-hour expose titled Brandon Buckingham Attacked Danny, I think it's time for me to give you my side of the story and what led up to the man-azing of Tiny Bones. Danny Mullen is an insecure 31-year-old failed stand-up comedian with a god complex who blacklisted me from working with several creators on YouTube starting way back in November of 2020. His co-host, Leo Dottavio, is a balding middle-aged man who used to desperately cling to the fame he garnered by appearing on the 14th season of The Bachelorette. Nowadays, you can find him in barnacle form, glued to the nutsack of Danny Mullen, bowing to his every demand like the dog that he is. In their podcast, Danny addresses the mayonnaise incident, my work with his sycophantic crew, all the times I have copied him, and my sickening obsession with him that he describes as me wanting to literally be him. I will address each and every one of these claims directly with video evidence, screenshots of texts, and direct messages. And man, oh man, are you guys going to realize that these two Beavis and Butthead doppelgangers are some serious, serious liars. But first, before we start the chronological recap, I gotta get this out of the way. I did not kick Nico Villacresis in the nuts. I had cameras rolling throughout the entirety of the manazing of little Daniel, and you will see the truth of what happened when we get to that point in the story. Now, we might as well put our plaid little skirts on, ladies and gentlemen, because we are about to get into some serious schoolgirl shit. It all started way back in January of 2020 when I began filming for my new YouTube channel series titled The Buckingham Show. I was still under contract as a school teacher at this time and hadn't released any content. In April of 2020, I became a patron of Danny Mullen's Release the Crack and Tear where I paid $3,000 to fly him, Nico, and Leo across the country to Maryland so we could film a video together. On the day my teaching contract ended, June 18th, I released my first episode, The Elite Spa, and headed to the airport to pick up Danny and the gang. We filmed the whole weekend, and by all accounts, we got along great. Except for two apparently weird occurrences that Danny points out in the podcast. Weird shit would happen. Like, I remember Brandon doing a freestyle about how he was going to be a better YouTuber than me. Mm. And I was just like, ah, oh, okay. Um, interesting choice of song, but okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, interesting choice of song, but okay. If you guys want to hear that freestyle, we have that here. I guess the freestyle that first planted the seed in little Daniel's mind that maybe I wanted to be him. Here it is. Mustard. Mustard, I bust turds in my ass and move <laughs> fast past Danny Mullen because he's a little f What's up, oh, yo? I'm gonna shit. slap the shit out of him and I'm gonna shit in my pants a little bit or piss in my pants at the Royal Farms. Mustard, I bust turds in my ass and move fast past Danny Mullen because he's a little poop. There it was. That was the first time Danny was like, oh God, he thinks he could be better than me. Maybe he wants to be me. That was strike one. The only weird occurrence to me was that after Danny agreed to bring his gi out to Maryland to do jujitsu with me, he refused. He said, I have no desire to. Well, I guess you and Danny probably go at it, huh? I have no desire to. You don't want to subdue him within a minute and a half? I don't care. So I guess Danny only wants to do jujitsu with people he knows he can beat. Great character trait, but that's neither here nor there. Now we're on to my first trip out to Los Angeles. When things started to get weird again was when I was home in Sacramento taking a vacation. I remember Brandon showed up in L.A., filming or hanging out with you right. but what was weird was he came out and with, there were all these stories with you mm -hmm. and then he starts posting stories with Churdley's who mm -hmm. i'd been collaborating with recently and then he starts posting stories with brooks mm -hmm. and then he starts posting stories with austin mm -hmm. and i'm like wait a second here so he's messaged every single person in the danny mullen spider web except for danny mullen mm -hmm. about coming to la and filming so let's get this straight Mayonnaise boy Mullen is on vacation six hours away in Sacramento, and I get invited by Leo Dottavio to come to L.A. and film. Danny is on my Instagram looking at my stories every day, seething at the thought that he didn't get an invite, even though everyone knows he's taking time off six hours away in Sacramento. 
I met Churdley's through Reckless Ben, who was filming a video surprising him with 50 boxes of pizza. Leo was the one who helped Ben confirm where Churdley's lived. Days later, I met Brooks in Austin because I was filming a video called Skinny Dipping in Venice Beach, where I wanted to take over the beach. Danny Burke, Derek Dino Schlosser, and Reckless Ben all appeared in that video months before they were ever on Danny's podcast. So this is strike two for your boy. Danny's such an insecure fucking pussy, he's on vacation freaking out because I'm filming with people that he's filmed with. Dude, you're on vacation. Get off Instagram, get off my nuts, and stop being a fucking weirdo. Now, this part is pretty ripe. Listen to the one thing Leo doesn't like about me when I'm out in LA the first time. The one thing that I didn't like about him was his affinity for like thinking that the only way to grow on YouTube or the most effective way to grow on YouTube was like trying to collab with these people or like putting these people in videos like yeah what's funny about this is leo has about 90 videos on his channel 35 of which feature danny mullen's name in the title some don't even feature danny mullen in the video he'll say things like i'm the new swinging d in town in parentheses moving closer to danny mullen it's hilarious and of the other videos that don't have danny's name in the title most of them are featuring other YouTubers. 34-year-old Leo is now filming and living with 19-year-old Jacob Kausch and doing videos with him every week. He even copies his thumbnails. We we ran into Alejandro and Steezy Kane, uh, you know, uh, in Venice, and he immediately was like, you know, he would, I mean, not to be like a dick, but he would blow anybody that yeah. was like a bigger YouTuber. So I'm all about collaborating. We meet Steezy and Alejandro. I'm sucking them off. But I seem to remember filming a video for Leo's channel that day called Crazy Starbucks Employees, where Leo put in the title featuring Steezy Kane. With that considered, it makes this next segment all the more interesting. For me or you or Brandon to collaborate with Steezy Kane, how does that make sense? But yeah. I have never wanted to collaborate with him for that reason because it's a different audience it's just it, i would feel like i'm just using him sure because which is the truth like i would just be using him to get some subscribers to get my name out there a sure. little bit because in in the reality we are we have different styles of comedy we you know we, we we do different things now brandon didn't seem like a tuned uh, he didn't care about that i mean it's hilarious did leo forget he did a video with steezy kane i guess he's openly admitting to using him for views i don't know but when i do a video with steezy i just call it the bellagio penthouse Leo does one with him. He puts featuring Steezy Kane in the title. Who's collaborating for views? Who's collaborating for the fun of it? Their argument is completely null. What other evidence do they have? I suck off Steezy Kane? Go ask Steezy Kane if I suck him off. I guarantee he'll say no. The way these guys manipulate things to make me seem like a weirdo, it's pure comedy. So that's the one thing Leo doesn't like about me, my affinity to collaborate with other YouTubers, even though about three quarters of my content isn't featuring other YouTubers, but that's fine. Let's talk about Danny's collabs. Let's hear it from them. I saw Danny do it with pretty much no help, but then, yeah, yes, the Nelk Boys gave him a, a, a big uh, opportunity because he fucking wrote them this classic bit, and then he outdid himself and in in performed really well in the video. That's different and than I just... And I already had, like, over 100,000 subscribers. You already had over 100,000 yeah. subscribers, which I've, we've all seen is an extremely hard place to get to in yeah. the first place. Do you see how egotistical Danny is? I... I already had over 100,000 subscribers, so trying to downplay the importance of the Nelk collab. Well, guess what, Danny? As you know, you got your start on Facebook having larger pages share your videos. That's how you got your start. Not only that, when you were at 10,000 subscribers, you had a bachelorette outcast named Leo Dottavio join your ranks to help you. Since then, you've done videos with Cassidy Campbell, Nelk, Brody TV, Churdley's, Danny Duncan, the list goes on and on. What's your point? Collaborating so bad, it doesn't make any sense. The, after the first time he came to LA, mm -hmm. I was cool. Yeah, after the first time I came to LA, I thought we were cool. Danny texted me inviting me out to Vegas in December, and I happily accepted. So Leo invites me to live with him in Los Angeles for a month for $600. I can sleep on his couch. It's during this time, in the beginning of November, that Leo wants to start a channel with me. Listen to this. He wanted to call the channel The Man Bun Boys. You know that's not a lie because I would never make up such a fucking dorky ass name like The Man Bun Boys. Yeah, Leo wanted to start a channel with me and I said no. Why did I say no? Because I didn't want to have to do all the editing and think of the ideas and have Leo piggyback off me. So when Leo wanted to start a channel, I said no. 
Oh, surprise. Leo probably didn't mention that to Danny, did he? The man bun boys. Ha, huh, what a goofy ass. I want to say a month later, he's in L.A. again, filming with Leo. And I can't recall if he was also trying to film with Austin and Brooks and everybody and do the same be Danny Mullen when Danny Mullen isn't aware that he's in town move. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure he did the same thing. He came out and he tried to work with everybody in my crew when I received no text or notification that he was coming to town. So there's some pretty ripe lies that Danny says here. First of all, when they were in Kansas filming that video about a month before I came to LA, I called him and told him, hey, I'm coming to LA. Then I have a text message from Leo where he says, hey, told Danny you were living with me. He was pumped. So yeah, in Danny's creepy little fantasy where I want to be him, apparently I don't tell him that I'm coming to LA, but I told him and Leo told him, whatever, who even cares? Secondly, as far as Austin and Brooks are concerned, I have text messages from them where Austin is inviting me on his podcast and Brooks is asking for my phone number to be in one of his videos. What a sin. Danny is such a narcissistic schoolgirl prick, he can't get over the fact that I'm friends with people in his crew. So listen to the reasons he now gives as to why I have some fantasy where I want to be him. I didn't look at his channel much, but I looked at his Patreon. I looked that he chose the exact same day to upload videos as I did. He originally chose Thursday, which is when I used to upload. His Patreon was a carbon copy of mine. I scrolled through a couple thumbnails and it's like, oh, making out with a black chick, making out with an old lady. I thought, this guy wants to be me, and it seems like it's something he's trying to convert from fantasy to real life by flying out and working with all my guys without telling me about it. You have to listen to how far he's stretching. He's saying, Brandon chose the same day that I used to upload on to upload. So Danny hasn't uploaded on Thursday for multiple months. He's been uploading on Friday. But because he used to upload on Thursday, and I currently do, that's me somehow wanting to be him. Apparently, if you're uploading on Thursday, you're copying Danny Mullen. Not only that, if you're kissing old women or black women, you are copying him as well. Go back and watch my episodes, The Elite Spa and The Simple Life Motel, and tell me what you think. Am I copying Danny? Or is he crazy and insecure looking through my channels? I mean, he scrolled all the way back to my first video, but he's claiming I didn't look at his channel much. He's looking at my Patreon. He's looking at the day I upload. He's obsessing about me. I'm like in his head and he's freaking out. He wants to be me. He wants to be me. So what does he do? Check this out. Yeah, I saw the second attempt without contacting me to ingratiate, is that a word, himself with everybody in my crew. And that's what I took Leo out to get drinks. I sat Leo down and it was really hard for me to do, but I was like, hey man, I'm uncomfortable with this Brandon situation. It just feels like he is trying to be me in my hometown, which doesn't threaten me or scare me. It just, it, it's like a distraction. Bang, it's strike three for your boy. You're out. Just like that, the blacklisting begins. Everyone in the crew is under strict orders that they cannot be seen online with Brandon or film with Brandon any longer. I'm blacklisted. I'm out. Nixed. Boom. Danny dropped the hammer on me. Just like that. I love how Danny clarifies it doesn't threaten me or scare me because he knows he's a fucking weirdo. He's low character. He's low class. What kind of person puts a blacklist on somebody that barely has 10,000 subscribers just because they moved to LA and are living with their co-host when they're invited to be? Needless to say, I'm totally taken back. So I reach out to Danny. Take a second to read these texts and tell me what you think. I took the time to be civil with this guy, to try to give him a chance to explain himself to me, have some kind of form of communication, and his response was, what you see. I appreciate the apology, but unfortunately, my decision is final on the matter. And that was that. And I remember Leo coming home telling me all this foul, foul shit that Danny talked about me to him. Just that I'm the most unoriginal, creepy weirdo, how I'm obsessed with him, I wanna be him, I'm never gonna make it on YouTube, all this shit where I'm like, God damn, this dude really fucking hates me. Danny's so in his head and concerned about the situation that at the dinner, he asks Leo, what if I want to film with you and you're out filming with Brandon? And then he goes on to guarantee Leo a six-figure salary and even says he'll film with him every week if he just doesn't film with me. Sounds pretty unconcerned and not threatened, doesn't it? 
This promise Danny made to film with Leo every week if he just wouldn't film with me only lasted one episode. It was called Raiding UCLA with Danny Mullen Again, a recreation of their earlier video. And after Danny had his dog back on a leash, he didn't keep up his promise. And he hasn't filmed another exclusive video for Leo's channel since. Pretty interesting, Leo. Seems like you got cucked. So Leo comes back like shocked. He's like, dude, I've never seen somebody so in his head. He's so upset. He's never acted this way. It's completely out of character. I don't know what's going on. I think he might be joking. It was just bizarre. We couldn't believe it. We're like blacklisted. I can't film with anybody. What the fuck? I just got here. I haven't done anything. Leo was just as confused about it as I was. I promise you. And then when he talks about it on the podcast, he's like, well, it was an easy decision, you know? Uh, you're the guy that pays me. Look, I make a living with, you, you know, work working with you i have a lot of fun doing it it's an easy decision for me to be like dude i'm sorry brandon like yeah. i can't fucking film with you dude and i think danny might be schizophrenic i'm not kidding because he says he's on his way to his girlfriend's house after he just blacklisted me and he feels the universe tell him he made the right decision like some amazing beautiful force swept over him and was like good job danny you blacklisted that kid with 10,000 subscribers and i remember after i had that conversation with you I drove to Santa Barbara to go see my girlfriend and I immediately had the sensation that I made the right move. Mm. It was like the universe just said, you're correct. Stand by what you just did. That was a tough decision, but you chose the right one. Another thing Leo said after the blacklist is, dude, listen, if you get more subscribers than Danny, I'll film with you. Until then, I'm with him. Believe me if you want. I don't care. I still think it's hilarious that he said that. Wormy shit. Wormy shit. So I had met this 19 year old kid named Jacob Couch and I wanted to get a place with him. I introduced him to Leo Dottavio and then we were all three gonna get a place together. Once the blacklist happened, Jacob and Leo, they went and got a place without me and that's fine. I went home back to Maryland at the end of November and that was it. While I'm back home in Maryland, my good old buddy Leo Dottavio is hitting me up numerous times to edit for him. If you don't know this, I've edited some videos for Leo. He even says, I just need that good old Brando touch. You know, the guy who copies Danny and is a creepy, obsessive weirdo. I just need that Brando touch. So, yeah, I'm back home. I think everything's fine with me and Leo. He's asking me to edit. We're good friends. We're buddy-buddy. Yada, yada, yada. Next, my Storming the Capitol Street Interviews video starts to go off, gets like 200,000 views and gains me 7,000 subscribers. And Leo and Couch are hitting me up, inviting me back out to LA. Producer Ian is hitting me up, saying a bunch of wild shit that I'll get it to in a minute. And I decide... It's a good idea. I'll go back out to LA. There's good content out there where it's not freezing and maybe Danny won't be such a vindictive fucking weirdo. Boy, was I wrong. And it's this trip where Leo actually starts to turn on me to my face, reveals who he truly is. But let's hear Leo talk about the third trip out to Los Angeles. He stayed with you. This is a third time. A third time, yeah. For a week, it was five days. It was me and Jacob. Jacob, I actually met- Jacob is your current roommate. Current roommate. I met uh, Jacob Couch. He, I met- Jacob through Brandon. It's so funny hearing Leo get caught up on his words when talking about Jacob. I think it's a little weird that a 34-year-old man's living with a 19-year-old boy. I was the 25-year-old middle piece in the whole thing, but I'm out of the picture. Now, Leo, 34-year-old grown man living with a 19-year-old. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, do you, man. He talks to Jacob, and Jacob, for some reason, had thought that I had said yes to this. So he invites him over. He basically just flies out in the next week, and he shows up at my front door. And he's like, hey, can I stay here? I've, look, I'm going to admit that I, I think that I'm oftentimes like people can take advantage of how I'm, I'm a nice guy. I'm, I'm a nice guy. So we got nice guy Leo saying he didn't say I could come. He didn't know I was coming. I show up at his door. Well, here's a text message that shows Leo agreeing to allow me to stay there. And also there seems to be a video that is ringing a bell in my head on Couch Daddy's channel where Leo comes to the airport, throws water balloons at me and picks me up and drives me to his house. Interesting. Is he lying or am I lying? Uh, there was a, a backstory of Ian saying that they were, he had no, he didn't have an, uh, like a backstory. He didn't know that there was this thing with Brandon where you, Ian, our editor, our editor didn't yeah. know there was a thing with Brandon. Yes. Listen to the way Danny says that Ian, our editor didn't know there was a thing with Brandon. I think this whole part kind of caught Danny off guard because he didn't even talk about it after this point in the podcast. That's all they said about it. But yeah, Ian said some pretty interesting stuff with me. He came into my live stream chat 
without me inviting him saying this then I said all right let's get into a discord and let's talk about it here's some of the stuff that was said during that discord chat on my live stream Danny and I hadn't really talked about you or doing videos with you until pretty recently a couple times I mentioned I'd watched a few of your videos and asked if you'd seen it and he said he hadn't and then uh, with the capital siege and those videos coming out and that chaos I mean there's some great shit in there man it's some really really good videos he felt like the releasing of the Kraken was like a you know it could be a shortcut for someone the truth of the matter is is that last time that I was editing with Danny I said do we gotta get Brandon another video and he said yeah absolutely if there was anything um, my only logic would be that it comes from Danny's, you know, uh, desire to protect what he's created. I think um, whatever was there, I wish I could had a clear idea of what it was. I know that it's not there anymore. Well, Kaush and Leo have said multiple times they want me to come back out and visit. Um, but like I said, the whole blacklisting thing has made it kind of odd. You know what I mean? I'm like, I want to come back out, but I, I don't... Uh, I'm not trying to step on old Danny's toes. You know what I mean? Again, man, I really, I could not imagine unless Danny reveals some, you know, thing that you've failed to mention that you, you know, killed his family dog. Uh, <laughs> I, there's no reason why he would have anything against you. Whether the, bl the blacklisting thing existed or not in the past, it does not now. I am certain if you just said you were coming back out, um, that there wouldn't there wouldn't be an issue. Well, boy was Ian wrong, because it turned out to be a major issue. Also, just a little reminder, the guy you just heard from is the guy that edits all of Danny Mullen's videos. Even he doesn't think I'm copying him. He edits all his videos, watched my content, loves my content, and can't feasibly think of a reason why I would be blacklisted. Turns out I didn't kill Mayonnaise Boy Mullen's family dog. I did something even worse. I filmed with Brooks, Leo, and Austin. What a crime. So, let's get back to our favorite schoolgirl, Danny Mullen, and here, where Brandon Buckingham went wrong in LA the third time he was there. I started, along with Leo, appearing on Johnny Mitchell's podcast, who's a comedian friend of ours, a contact made by Leo. Yes. Leo's the contact man. We started going on his show, and then I started seeing a continuation of this theme I'm talking about, Ben, of Brandon trying to insert himself into our orbit. Yeah. I start seeing him comment on Johnny Mitchell's videos, like, hey, man, your podcast is big time. Mm -hmm. And I start to get a feeling like, okay, I think I know where this is headed. Woo! I think I know where it's headed too, Danny. You're gonna accuse me of copying you again, aren't you? But wait, here's the thing. I met Johnny back in November before you had even met him. You came onto his podcast January 15th, and he asked me to come onto his podcast back in November before you even met him. Hmm, really interesting, Danny. Super interesting. So I go on this guy, Johnny Mitchell's podcast, and it is a terrible experience. Let me tell you, his ego is as big as his dick is limp. He's got Danny's dick so far down his throat, it's unbelievable. But he doesn't know that I'm blacklisted, right? So he's like, I'll be the mediator between you two. Come to this comedy show tonight, and I'll work everything out. Blah, blah, blah. Does this little shitty accent. And the timestamp on that video, I had written it down, was one hour hour, three minutes and 34 seconds where Johnny explicitly tells me come to the comedy show. So it was decided I would go to the comedy show, but I knew Leo didn't want me to come. Earlier that day, Leo forced me to leave his apartment because Danny and Leo were going to go film there. And he like was freaking out because I was in there for like five minutes trying to get my camera stuff. And he's like losing his mind. Oh my God, I'm going to end our friendship. I'm going to end our friendship. But what did I do? I left the apartment I was in to avoid Danny and Leo. So despite Danny saying I'm a creepy obsessed stalker, when I had the opportunity to stay in Leo's apartment and confront him, I chose to leave out of respect for Leo. If you can imagine, the whole situation is getting kind of annoying. So, Leo, Kausch, Chase, Austin, Derek, 
Cigar Guy are all going to a comedy show tonight where Johnny, Danny, and Leo are performing. I decide I'm going to go. Leo doesn't want me there, but I say, you know what, man? I'm just going to go. It's a public event. It's a comedy show. I'm going to go. I hear from Leo when Leo and I are on the way to a, an open mic. It was going to be me, Leo, and Johnny Mitchell working out some material. Not a show, not a public event, just the three of us trying to get better. Leo texts me, hey, Brandon came into town, did Johnny Mitchell's podcast, and is now headed to this open mic. It's really funny because you get to hear firsthand how much of a manipulative weirdo Danny is. It's at the Fourth Wall Comedy Club. He says it's not a show, not a public event, but somehow I'm there with five other friends who are not performing. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I tell Leo, uh, dude, I'm not going there if this guy's going to be here. This guy is starting to feel like a stalker. It always felt like a stalker situation, yeah. but now it's turning into a tangible stalker situation. Yeah. This guy is following you to a physical location you're going to be at. First of all, I don't need an invite to go to an open mic. Second of all, I'm a creepy stalker. What about Austin, Derek, Cigar Guy, Jacob Couch, or Chase that were also there with me? Are they stalkers? Are they creeps? Danny's such an insecure control freak, he can't even imagine the possibility of him going on stage and having me possibly heckle him, which I don't even plan on doing, mind you. So, guess what this guy does? I told Leo to like, hey man, I'm I'm not gonna go. Brand, or you text Brandon, like, hey, hey bro, dude, yeah. don't come to this open mic, it's me and Johnny Mitchell and Danny working out material, you weren't mm. really invited, yeah. and Brandon, shows up anyway yes he leaves he drove all the way there from his house got into the parking lot and fucking left it was hilarious and i'm inside leo texts me three minutes after the show starts and says danny's gonna leave if you don't leave can you please go somewhere and i'm like fuck no i'm a grown man i'm gonna sit in this chair if he wants to come inside he can come inside i'm not gonna do anything and that's that so you have the host of the comedy show calling Danny Mullen, whose name's on the list, like he's a schoolgirl that missed his bus. Danny Mullen, Danny Mullen. It's humiliating, dude. It's absolutely humiliating. And I got a huge kick out of it. The guy wouldn't even come inside. Of course he's got to paint me as a stalker, because what's he going to say? Big Bad Brandon was inside a comedy show and I drove there and wouldn't even come inside? I mean, he's backed into a corner. He's trying to paint me out to be this weird freak, and he's reaching. It's so funny, and it's so clear when I watch his podcast. So I had a blowout with him. Yeah. I did say some things that I don't mean, and I, I was really mean to what, him. Did you use the N-word? I did not use the N-word. Mm. Uh, but uh, I told him to get the fuck out of my house, and, and you know, and then he did eventually. And uh, What did you say exactly? I said... I said something like, uh, I was like, you'll never be better than fucking Danny. Get the fuck out of here. I, I well, did say it's, something it's, like it's that. It's crazy that that is considered an insult to, to him, him. Yeah, because he, he it's was. such a priority in his mind. Like, I especially love this part. Look at Danny's egotistical draping of his hand over the microphone. Leo didn't say, you'll never be better than Danny Mullen. He said all the meanest, nastiest, most fucked up shit. He stooped as low as to mock a dead family member I had, to rub it in my face that one of my family members had died. Danny gets a kick out of like, oh wow. You told him that he wasn't going to be as good as me. I bet that really hurt him. I don't give a fuck if I'm not as good as you, Danny. It's not about that for me, dude. You guys are fucking weird. I said things like that. I also said, like, you know, like, I, dude, I'll fuck you up. I'm pretty sure I said I'd fuck him up. And, uh, you know, and then he wanted to, like, box me for YouTube. And I was and I kind of like I, I made fun of him. I was like, throw me. Th let's see. One, two, three. I was like, you're a little bitch. So because I went to the comedy show, Leo says all this nasty, heinous shit, kicks me out of his place. So I have nowhere to stay and then says he's going to fuck me up when he says he's going to fuck me up. I'm like, dude, we could do MMA. We could do jujitsu. What do you want to do? All he wants to do is box and he doesn't want to box on camera. That's really funny because later he told Danny this. Leo tells me that immediately after we released that Fight Club video, mm -hmm. which was YouTube art, it's hard to make a better video. That, nobody makes better videos than that on YouTube. Let's be honest. I heard that right That's after that happened, Brandon came up to Leo in the apartment that they were sharing. Mm -hmm. Brandon was sleeping on the couch and said, yeah. Leo, you should box me for my channel right after that video came out. Yes. So he just um, just saw Danny Mullen doing something and just shamelessly went up to you. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to put out a video. I boxed Leo mm -hmm. right after it happened. So. I don't think you can deny that Brandon Buckingham is the Balin Levine of Danny Mullen. 
Danny wants that to be true so bad, and you can tell. But here's the funny thing. That video came out February 5th. I didn't even get to LA till February 15th, 10 days later. And somehow, the blowout at the comedy show where Leo says he's gonna fuck me up and I tell him I'll fuck you up on camera gets misconstrued to now I'm copying Danny. The connections these guys make, it's almost schizophrenic. It's really almost fucking schizophrenic. In this text message from Friday, February 19th, I have Leo confirming that he wants to box, but not on video. He won't give me the cameras, get a mouthpiece, yada, yada, yada. He also says something about if I share anything personal about him that he shared with me, he'll fucking lose it. Why do you think he's saying that? Is it possible Leo Tavio is not the nice guy he's made himself out to be? Maybe he talks a lot of serious, serious foul shit about a lot of the people around him. But I won't even get into that. We'll leave that in the past. Leo, you're welcome. Dude, I, I apologize for saying those mean things. And I, you know, I, I don't, I hope I wasn't a guy that escalated this in any way, but. Oh, you apologize. The whole nice guy routine. Well, let me think, Leo. I don't think I accept. Check out this clip where Danny says me attending a comedy show proved his suspicion that I'm either not right in the head or don't have good social skills. Him going to the open mic confirmed my suspicions that this guy might, if he's not right in the head, he definitely has very poor social skills. That confirmed that. But even a he's, larger- He was acting irrational. I hope he wasn't on anything. He could have been drunk. I particularly enjoy the assertion that maybe I'm not mentally stable. Thank you, Danny. And Leo saying maybe I'm drunk is hilarious. Dude, I've been sober since November. The last time I drank was the weekend before Thanksgiving. Leo knows this. Leo knows for a fact I've been sober ever since then. Why is he bringing it up? He just can't help himself. He has to throw a lie in there. He has to throw some weird little lie in there. You know? Even a larger confirmation, though, was he appeared on the Johnny Mitchell show. And I guess Johnny Mitchell took a really pro Danny Mullen stand like they had. They discussed the, the subject of him filming with me. Johnny Mitchell was really firmly in my camp. Brandon Buckingham, I guess, didn't like that. Brandon Buckingham privacy complaints the video. This is true. Why did I get my podcast taken down with Johnny Mitchell? Because it was the second most popular thing on his channel and he's a fucking worm. He doesn't deserve to have me on his channel. He's a bad person, he's weak, he's a coward, and here's a reason why. After I attended the comedy show that Johnny told me to go to, he found out Danny wasn't happy I was there. So what does brave Johnny do? Johnny walks into the comedy show, points directly at me and says, you shouldn't be here. I told you not to come. And I'm like, Johnny, what the fuck, man? You did tell me to come. And he's like, nope, never said that. Didn't say that. You're a child. You shouldn't be here. And I'm like, what? I mean, he's, he's being so convincing about it. I'm like, maybe he didn't tell me to come. I don't even make a fucking huge deal about it. Leo's freaking out on me. Johnny's freaking out on me. The whole nine yards. So I go back and watch his podcast and there it is. He says it to me. I should come to the comedy show. So I leave a comment time stamping exactly where he says it and says, hey man, pretty fucked up. You told me to come to the comedy show then freaked out when I did. You're a real Danny Mullen ball rider. And then he texts me telling me I should take the comment down and I'm like, Rewatching that was pretty whack, man. And then he sends this hateful ass message to me. He even said on his podcast that I'm done in LA. I'm finished in LA. Johnny, please just let us all know. What are you gonna do if you see me, man? What are you gonna do when I come to town? I'll be there soon. Let us know. So that's the Johnny Mitchell story. He's just a 35 year old failed comedian like Danny who is now sucking the balls of a YouTuber to help his comedy career. I remember when I first met Johnny, he even said he didn't know who Danny was, he never watched his stuff, but he wanted to be a part of the channel because he had numbers. Classic, Johnny. Now we have Austin recounting what I said on the Johnny Mitchell podcast about Danny. Pretty sure I never said he was intimidated by my comedy. Even if I did, I don't care. I thought I said something along the lines of, I'm his daddy, he's intimidated by me, not my comedy. And I do think he's intimidated by me. Listen to how he responds to this assertion. Yeah, Danny blacklisted me from the channel because he's like intimidated by my comedy did he say that is something along those lines mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure see he's, he has said that he said that to me too i mean before, yeah. talk about delusional ego 
you have been doing. I'm not even so sure it's comedy. It's I mean, sticking a microphone in somebody who's homeless and addicted to drugs his face mm-hmm. and having them talk isn't comedy. It's I'm not I'm up. not trying to be insulting, but this just shows delusion and ego can destroy you. And for him to say I'm intimidated by his comedy chops when I don't think he's been doing comedy or even YouTube for a year is insane, dude. I've yeah. been writing and performing and training comedy for eight years. Delusion and ego can destroy you, Danny, can't they? And I really love hearing Danny like try to convince himself. It's like he has to talk himself up about how great he is. I've been doing this for eight years. He's so offended at the possibility that I said my comedy is better than his. Who cares, man? What are you so insecure about? And also, he says, I don't even do comedy. I just stick a mic into a homeless and drug addicted person's face. But isn't one of his claims that I'm copying him? He does comedy, right? But then he's saying, I don't do comedy. So am I copying you? Or do I do some shitty thing that isn't comedy, which would then be different than what you do? It's uh, it's kind of a, a web of lies he's getting caught up in. A web of confusion, maybe. Even when I had told Leo and everybody else not to film with Brandon, I was trying to be outwardly as civil as possible because I knew there was still a chance that I had gotten it wrong Mm -hmm. and that the situation would resolve itself and that I would want to work with Brandon in the future. So I didn't want to slam him, say anything negative, because if he started doing his own thing, he started putting out some creative content like Reckless Ben, Mm -hmm. there was a chance that like, hey, we can get reunited and sort fucking through this. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I think it's really kind and considerate, Danny, when you don't say anything publicly about me, but for months, you go behind the scenes and talk about how I'm some unoriginal, creepy stalker that nobody should trust. If Danny had it his way, nobody would like me and I wouldn't even know why. And of course you can't go public with it. What are you going to make a statement to your fans saying, hey, remember Brandon Buckingham? I blacklisted him from filming with me or anyone I'm affiliated with. That's not a good look. I only had 10,000 subscribers at the time. Even now I only have 23,000 subscribers. It's not a good look, dude. What you did was weird. It was wrong. And that's why you weren't public with it. Don't act like a good guy after the fact for keeping it behind the scenes. It was so fucked up because it was behind the scenes. Danny has publicly slammed every single other creator he has had beef with. He's even publicly slammed every creator that's lived with Leo, Andrew Judge TV, and Rumon. He slammed both of them, even turning Rumon into a sunfish. It's pretty ridiculous. I'm the only guy he goes behind the scenes and does all this weirdo shit to. I don't I don't know what it was. Like he he wanted there was an attachment to you that was a little irrational and maybe you know, sexual could you say it could be sexual mm. Danny it could be sexual mm. Danny likes to imagine that I have an irrational attachment to him of a sexual nature which is kind of weird man I don't know why he said that but Leo this whole time you're acting like you're on my side you're helping me with the blacklist right You're talking to Danny for me. You even tell me that I should write him up a long email. And then you come out and say this, I have an irrational attachment. It's just so fake. I mean, how fake does it get, dude? So Leo kicks me out of his place and I go stay with Phil, Alejandro, and Steezy Kane. And something really interesting happened. Look, I, when I, I, I've spoken to Steezy Kane numerous times. I had even had lunch with him one time. Leo, who had never been out to lunch with him before, magically finds his way on a sushi date with the people I'm staying with while I'm at home editing. And what does he tell them? He tells Phil, Alejandro, and Steezy that I'm genuinely creepy with women and that you can't bring me around women. They say, hey, dude, I think he's just joking. It's like a character thing. Bad pickup artist. Leo goes, no. He's genuinely creepy around women. You can't trust him around women. Which is just the ultimate fucking fake snake shit ever because I shot a video called Five Easy Tips to Pick Up Women that is the epitome of my bad pickup artist character. And guess who filmed it? Leo Dottavio. Talk about a stalker who kicks someone out of their house and then finds out who that person goes to stay with and goes out to lunch with them and then badmouth them to them. He probably didn't even know they were going to tell me, but they're my friends, so they did what any good friend would do. They came home and told me and was like, dude, he's really talking shit about you. So, beautiful, Leo. Thanks for that one. Whoo! Are you guys getting tired of hearing about all the fucked up shit Leo and Danny have done? Because I've been going on for hours. I'm ready to stop, but the story keeps going. So, after I left Phil Alejandro and Steezy's, I came home for a little bit and then went back to Austin, Texas, where I stayed with my good friend, Kegel Weagle. While I'm staying with Kegel Weagle, guess who's on the phone with him? Leo DeTavio. 
And guess what he's doing? He's talking shit about me, saying, You let this bum live on your couch? I bet he's mooching off you. And Kegel Legal, who's my boy, has my back and is like, Nah, fuck that. Brandon can stay with me as long as he wants. I see this conversation is happening, and I have a huge blowout with Leo, telling him, Dude, you are such a rat. Next time I see you, it's fucking on. I mean, I am tired of these guys trying to blacklist me with creators. It's at a certain point where it's like, dude, just leave me alone. You guys are freaks. They keep going and going. So I'm pretty pissed at this point. Leo texts me the next morning after talking all this crazy shit, saying we're going to fight when we see each other. And he reaches out for a truce. What a weird worm. You don't just get to talk all this shit badmouth me to different creators and then be like hey man truce hey man truce but that's leo Dottavio for you smiling in your face and talking shit behind your back so i'm in austin texas i get there the beginning of march i'm there all month and i hear from someone that danny mullen's coming to town when i got to austin texas i heard from nerdballer who's been a buddy of ours for years yeah. hey Brandon Buckingham heard you were going to be in Texas, and I've heard that he keeps delaying his flight. Yes, that is true. I did delay my flight. Once. I know for a fact, Nerdballer wants to stay out of this. He thinks it's schoolgirl shit. He wants to stay neutral. I know this so much because Nerdballer's the one who told me Danny was coming to town. Not only that, but he said when he, Danny found out I was hanging out with Nerdballer, Danny called him and he said, Lorenzo, you got to listen to me. This guy's a creepy, obsessed stalker and you cannot stay neutral on this. Don't be a pussy, you have to pick a side. Essentially saying that if Nerdballer wanted to film with Danny anymore, he could not associate with me. He had to join in on the fucking blacklist. But Nerdballer is not glued to the nutsack of Danny, so he had the decency to tell me what Danny said. Why is Danny even bringing him into this? He wants to stay neutral. Lorenzo wants nothing to do with this situation. So why is Danny bringing him up? So as soon as I get this concrete evidence that Danny is not only blacklisting me amongst his crew, he's blacklisting me to other creators, I decide I'm definitely, definitely going to confront him. As for why Danny's bringing Nerdballer into this, he's trying to pit people against me. Kind of like what he said about Brooks. Brooks originally said like, hey, this guy's stepping on your toes. I remember that. Brooks was skeptical. Danny claims Brooks was skeptical of me when he first met me, but look at this DM I have from Brooks right after he first met me. Not only that, but when Brooks catches wind that I might be making a video about Danny Mullen, he approves. As an agent of chaos, Brooks wants to see it happen. Maybe all these people that Danny thinks hate me because he's badmouthed me to them don't hate me as much as he thinks because they've actually met me in real life. But anyway, let's get back to more narcissistic Danny talking about how much I copy him. Get ready. The copying accusations, I guess just more and more credence is being lent to those. I heard when I was in Texas from, I believe, Nerdballer that right after we did our in this, uh, this is hearsay. This could be incorrect date wise, but I'm just trying my best to piece this together. And again, as I said earlier, I'm not trying to stoke these flames and to get Brandon and Hooligan Christian and whoever else is involved more yeah. upset. On the contrary, I'm just trying to be transparent and squash this. Yeah, but I heard. Like we did a paintball video in Modesto, Brandon and his Texas crew go shoot a paintball video the next week. Dude, what is this guy even talking about? I'm trying to be transparent and I'm trying to squash this. I'm a good guy. So he claims he did a video in Modesto doing paintball. I don't even know what he's talking about. Can someone tell me what he's talking about? Show me a video of Danny doing paintball in Modesto. I mean, I, I really don't know. He claims I copied that video by doing paintball myself. I guess he's referring to a video on Kegel Weagle's channel where we all played paintball for his channel, which wasn't my idea. I guess that's Keegan copying him or me copying him. What the fuck is he talking about? I think he's schizophrenic or he's just that desperate to make me look bad. Oh, yeah. Also, I guess uh, I, somebody said that he copied the worst town in America too. I didn't see that, but I just heard there was a ripoff video of worst town in America mm -hmm. based on somewhere. I, for, I forget. He's like a politician about it, where he's like, somebody told me that he did. Dude, you saw my interviewing the homeless people, right? That's the only possibility of me copying your Worst Town in America videos, because I go to a town. I mean, Danny thinks, 
I did paintball, someone else does paintball, you're copying me. I go to a town and do a video, you go to a town and do a video, you're copying me. He has a god complex. He's a narcissist. So, back to the story. Danny knows I'm going to be in Austin, Texas because of Nerdballer, and I know he's going to be there as well. What do you know? And Danny gets one of these cute little feelings again. And I say, I thought about it for a while, and then I just got another one of those feelings like I got when I told you that, hey, don't, stop filming with this dude, that here's the right choice. The right choice is to do exactly what you planned to do when you came to Texas, to not avoid going to any of the public locations where they might be able to come in and invade. Wow, Danny's so brave. This time, he's not going to avoid public places. Really on brand for our guy, Danny Mullen. I think that feeling of certainty I had was somehow related to how perfectly this thing unfolded for us and how imperfectly it unfolded for them. I don't know what they're going to do. If they weren't filming this, they're idiots. Yes, Mayonnaise Boy Mullen talks about how perfectly the mayonnaise being squirted in his face turned out for him. And he's wondering, what am I going to do? Well, Danny, if you're watching this, I guess you're finding out right now. Brandon, I never saw I never saw the violent side. Of I, I felt it. I felt that tingle in my spine from the first time I met him and then it dissipated for a little bit then it came back all right so Leo's bullshitting out of his ass here because I've been this close to Leo's face yelling at him telling him I'm gonna beat the shit out of him and Danny he's getting tingles in his spine from me I felt this tingle in my spine and then it dissipated like dude this guy's such a great a pussy it's uh it's comedy he really is a comedian I, I, dude, he must have been just, he must have lost nights of sleep stewing over this. Yeah. Just getting madder and madder that Danny Mullen yeah. had the audacity to come to Texas, yeah. delaying his flight over and over. I think this sentence is Mayonnaise Boy Mullen projecting on me a bit here. Listen to his voice squeak. He must have, he must have lost nights of sleep. Like, dude, I bet he lost nights of sleep thinking about me after he blacklisted me, went around behind the scenes and said all this crazy shit. Dude, he's having tingles in his spine. The universe versus Teddy give messages. This man's losing so much sleep. I always thought it would have been a, I'm going to film this and be like, and be like, what's up, Danny? Why am I blacklisted? Like, I always thought that that's the only thing that would have happened. Sure, have sure. That. That's what I thought was going to happen, too, which would have been fine. Mm -hmm. And this is fine, too. I mean, this isn't the fucking end of the world. It just I don't think it looks good for their party. Well, Danny, I don't think this looks good for your party. And that's what you thought I would do. Nah, dude, that's what you wanted me to do. So you could lie through your forked tongue like the politician you are. Now, let's get to the moment of truth, the manazing of Tiny Bones. I'm going to sip my tea for this one. So I'll just let them give you the breakdown of what happened with cameraman Nico. He was very... Uh, surprised that Brandon would hit him, especially because they had never any ill will at all. Yeah, Brandon kicked him in the nuts. Like bad, like vi like he wanted to hurt little Nico, dude. And then he definitely kicked him. He absolutely round kicked Nico. Yeah. I saw that. He yeah. attacked Nico. This guy fucking attacked cameraman Nico. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon Buckingham decides that Nico is a threat that needs to be met with punches and kicks. Yeah, he kicks him very viciously in the balls. Nico basically took him down with one hand after he was assaulted by Brandon Buckingham. He was kicked and pushed and then took him down. It was cowardly, dude. Let's call it what it is, dude. He, he kicked Nico, defenseless Nico, holding a camera in the nuts, dude. That's fucked up, dude. But um, I hope he gets the help he needs, man. I punch and kick Nico. Kick him in the balls. They were really heavy on that. I kicked him in the nuts. I was vicious, violent, a murderous, kicking him in the nuts. Then Nico throws me to the ground. Defenseless Nico, with one hand, wielding a camera, throws me to the ground. Well, I'm not so sure that's what the camera tells. And these guys, they like to paint this little picture, but let's just see what my footage shows. I'm a male, this man. What's up, bitch? What's good? What's up? Let's go. What's good, Danny? Don't touch me, Nico. Don't touch me. I'll fuck you up, Nico. What's good? Nico? Nico, touch me again. What's good, bro? Dude, 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 bro. What up? Dude. What are you filming, bitch? Stop it. Stop. I'm done. Hey, step. Give me the back. Give me the back. All right, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, I'm done, we're good. 
I, he was shoving me. I'm telling you, I'm not resisting. All right, Nico. There's the footage. I brutalized Nico. Or, as you can see, he pushes me not once, not twice, but three times. And I'm telling him, don't touch me, Nico. I'll fuck you up. Don't touch me. Obviously, I don't want to fuck up Nico. But here's my situation. I'm trying to do something to Daniel Mullen because he's fucked with me for months. And I have a blacked out Nico with shark eyes staring me in the face, shoving me. What am I supposed to do? I could shove him back, which might break his camera. I could kick him in the torso, which might break his camera. Or I could deliver a head kick, which you know I'm capable of, to little Nico. None of those are an option. I have to let him know, hey man, you got to stop pushing me. So I give him a leg kick. I'm sure none of you guys are surprised that Danny and Leo were lying about this if you made it this far in the video, but my god, it is absolutely insane their description of the events. You can see them in the footage watching everything that happens. They have no excuse for lying. They said, I viciously attack Nico for no reason. I punch him, I kick him in the balls, and then he throws me to the ground. It is comedy these guys are pathetic i'm telling you and they've been trying to ruin my career for months so for those of you who still think maybe i kicked nico in the nuts listen to the sound of the kick landing and how he does not react at all <laughs> Even MMA fighters with thousands of dollars on the line fall to the ground when they are kicked in the nuts. Is Nico a titan? He doesn't react at all. He even throws a cute little elbow at me. You can't make this shit up. Uh, so he, I guess, accused me, Austin said, of trying to get him arrested. As you can see yeah. here, I did not have time to go up and whisper into a police officer's mm -hmm. ear, hey, I think you guys should tackle this dude with the glasses yeah. and sweatshirt. And then it, the cops asked me explicitly if I wanted to press charges for the mayonnaise incident. I said no. Mm -hmm. Nico admittedly said he wanted to press charges for the kicks. Right. And you know what? Fucking that is absolutely Nico's right. Absolutely. Nico showed up to film comedy videos and he yeah. got kicked in the nuts and yeah. he got round kicked in the leg. It's bullshit. By a guy he has that he did. Nico did nothing to provoke Brandon. But here's the deal. I'm told by the people that Danny Mullen spent the rest of his night with that he thinks hate me that he is overcome with joy that I'm going to jail. He thinks I'm spending the rest of the night in jail. He thinks Nico pressed charges on me and he's happy. Can you believe that? Danny Mullen is excited that I'm in jail. Uh, it's, I'm speechless. I'm speechless about it. I hear from my sources that in Danny's upcoming video, he gives Nico like a badge of honor to congratulate him on his great work. But little does he know, loyal old Nico might be a liar just like his two grandpappies, Danny and Leo. I don't want to press charges, but I won't let them know what happened. I know that was hard to hear, but in that clip, I have Nico on camera saying to the police officer, I don't want to press charges. Then he scurries to his little masters and tells them the opposite. And they are excited. They are overjoyed. They want Brandon in jail. You have to. Here Nico says, so the cops came and I pressed charges. And Leo goes, you have to. In this next clip, we have an awestruck mayonnaise covered Mullen looking around. And when Leo's asked, are you going to press charges? He answers, someone should. So I guess Danny's going to hide behind the fact that he's not going to press charges on me for mayonnaise, but he's going to get Nico to press charges on me for assaulting him. They're asking if he wants to like press charges. Dude, are you going to press charges? Dude, dude, the girl should. The comedy's not over yet. My dearest friend Keegan Weagle got this amazing bit with Danny for me to put in the video. Thank you, Keegan. Hey, dude. Hey, fuck that guy. Dude. <laughs> hey, is, uh, is that your boy over there? Yeah, Brandon. What? Yeah, Brandon. Why do you do that? You've been talking shit about him, apparently. I haven't said anything about that fucking guy. That's what I heard. Who are you? I'm Keegan Weagle the Eagle. You are a disgusting human being. You're the one covered in mayonnaise, dude. You guys went over there. You're a disgusting human being. Keegan replies, you're the one that's covered in mayonnaise, dude. 
burned. Danny, you got got. Not only that, but Danny says to Keegan, if you rewind, he says, I haven't said shit about that guy. Not fucking three days prior was he telling Nerdballer that I'm a creepy, obsessed stalker that he could not stay neutral on. He had to pick a side. Then he goes publicly and says, I haven't said shit about that guy. This guy lies so much, and I think this video has really shown that. Clearly, Danny thinks I'm out there by myself, none of these people are my friends, no one he's hanging out with that night are my friends, but I'm told from the people he was hanging out with that night that he is saying my YouTube career is over. He is going to use this footage to do an entire video about me ending my YouTube career, and that's what he did, the hour-long podcast. He's trying to end my YouTube career. He was excited that I was in jail, and he was excited to end my YouTube career. Not only that, but when the cameras were off in private when he was hanging out with Leo and the rest of the people, someone who was my little canary perhaps, he made another nasty, hateful comment, again mocking a dead member of my family. Danny Mullen, you are a fucking scumbag. Now, after all this, Danny's blacklisted me, gone through all this shit for months, fucked with me, wants me in jail. Now he's taking the high road. He's going to apologize. His chess move is to relinquish every single beef he has with any YouTuber. Can you believe it? I didn't see that coming. The biggest pussy move of them all. He goes on an apology rant. He's no longer going to be Howard Stern, shock jock radio wannabe. He's going to be a nice guy. I think it's so he can get everyone to turn against me. So I can't rally up an army to go against Danny Mullen. Listen to this guy. Listen to the apologies Danny Mullen is making, taking the high road. I want to say this. I'm relinquishing the Howard Stern, fuck you, fuck you, you're a sunfish. My fans are going to boo you off stage. I don't want that. I have no problem with Steezy. He seems like a nice kid. Dude, I'm, I'm new to the podcasting medium. Yeah. I heard fucking Jim Norton go on a tirade the morning that I did that thing, and I was cooking my eggs, and I was like, oh, I like Jim's passion here. Mm -hmm. I like his pizzazz. I'm going to replicate it tonight. Dude, so I, I start, is, I start yeah. being negative about the first name that's brought up. Look, it's nothing personal views, about yeah. Steezy Kane. I'm sorry, dude. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with you. I don't want to fight Hooligan Christian, who I was texting with friendly. Brandon Buck him. I've got no beef with you, dude. Seriously, man. I was neither put, do I, dude. I was pushed to a decision because of behavior that I felt was a little inappropriate. And again, I've tried to be as diplomatic as possible. I don't want this, and I know that you don't want this either, man. Listen, Daniel. I do want this. You fucked with me for no reason. In the beginning, I couldn't understand why. I didn't want it. You kept going. You keep lying. You keep being a weirdo. Now I want it, mayonnaise boy Mullen. What are you going to do about it? You've relinquished your beef with Steezy and Hooligan Christian because they're my friends and you act like you're a good guy? You say you love me? You say you forgive me? Brandon, I forgive you. I'm not sure if you want my forgiveness. There is no ill will. This is silly. Let's let it go. You forgive me, but I'm not sorry, Danny. You're the one who's going to be fucking sorry, you weirdo, dude. What a weirdo. And I say that because even after this podcast, he's still fucking with me behind the scenes. He hits up Hooligan Christian to try to get him onto the next podcast so he can talk more shit about me, trying to recruit my friends to go against me after he took the high road, after he relinquished the beefs, after he forgave me and said he loved me. Danny Mullen, you are a true, true piece of shit. It is unbelievable, man. Narcissistic, egotistical weirdo who's trying to ruin my YouTube career all because what? I gave you $3,000 and filmed with a few people in your crew? How low, how spineless, and what a coward you really are. You knew he was gonna what? I just, I knew that guy was a psycho from day one. How? I just could feel it. And I was proved oh, right, I think. So here's my final proposition. Danny Mullen, I have $10,000 on the line that I will whoop that candy ass in MMA or jujitsu. That's $10,000 that says I will beat the shit out of you. You can either accept it or admit that you're a weirdo pussy who's been fucking with me behind the scenes and you're scared that I will kick the crap out of you. 
there it is. If you're still watching this video, subscribe, click the notifications bell, maybe refollow because I've lost about uh, 300 to 400 subscribers now from Danny Mullen shit talking. I've received hundreds of hate messages, people telling me they're going to kill my family, they're going to kill me, I'm the biggest scumbag. Hey, hope you watch this video. If not, I know in my heart of hearts, I'm right. Danny, you're wrong. You know you're wrong. You're a weirdo. Let's see how you respond to this. Eat shit. Mayonnaise boy. Hey, Danny Mullen breathes with gays. But yeah, dude, ripping me off is a fucking terrible idea. Like, if Louis C.K. and Adam Carolla came to YouTube and tried to do what I do, I would roll those guys. When you patch everything together into a high stress, high demand, constant output YouTube career, I will smash any comedian who steps to me on the planet. There's gonna come a time when trying to be me doesn't work out. It might not be this year, it might not be in the next five years. Brandon Buckingham could be a towering success mm -hmm. trying to be me, and that's fine. But the problem is there comes a judgment day. <laughs>